Let's have a look at Topaz Video Enhancement AI performance on the M1 Pro and M1 Max. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I'll be sharing a lot of information. Feel free to pause the video so you can analyze the graph yourself. Let's have a look at our test and reference system for the M1 Pro M1 Max laptop. There'll be four of them and memory will range from 16, 32 to 64 and M1 Pro M1 Max. So we're going to see a pretty comprehensive picture and if there's any difference in a way how these machines would perform. I will also include the result from two Intel machines and two M1 to give us a frame of reference. And this is going to provide us with a really comprehensive performance map out of all these Macs. Quickly, I want to share with you that I have released a few videos on Topaz Image Enhancement Software. Part one gives us an overview and talk about a JPEG workflow and a benchmark to see how these programs, Denoise Sharpen and Geek AI, perform with JPEG file. In part two, that focus of shift into a raw DNG workflow and see how those programs, Denoise and Giga AI, perform with a raw image. And because Topaz have just released Denoise AI version 3.4.1, that is now running native on Apple Silicon. I have to release an addendum video and ran the test again across different machines. So I've taken the JPEG and the raw file from part one and two, put it through the program and gave you my analysis. And we're seeing some pretty good improvement between, I would say 20 to 40%, depending on the file. And you can watch that video up here and in the description below, I'll leave links to them there. But many of you have been waiting for a long time for video enhanced AI. Let's jump right into it. The file that I use to test this is about a 12 minute video. It is a student project that I did together with my colleagues when I was in school. And it is filmed on a DV camera, edited together in Final Cut Pro and everything. This is a 720 by 480 pixel file, very small, highly interlaced. So I have gone in and used the Dion Interlace Robust or Dione. I hope I pronounced one of those is correct. But anyway, I used the version four in Video Enhancement AI to remove the interlace and also scale up the video. It does a really good job, but we're really focusing on the performance and not so much how well it does with the footage, even though it did amazingly well. And for that, I have enhanced the footage to 720p rather than going to 1080 because 1080 takes a very long time. This is still giving us an idea for how the machine are performing. I want to point out that in Video Enhanced AI, you can go into the program preferences and you definitely should do that because you should choose the AI processor. For the M1 computers in general, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and just M1, automatic tends to work fairly well, although you're going to see a performance improvement if you go in and choose, for example, M1 Max, for instance, you're going to see that jump in performance. And the other thing I also want to point out that I bumped the memory usage to very high. So if it can use all of it, why not? Even doing this, I still see that the program for this particular video file doesn't use more than about a gig. It's usually hovering around seven to 800 megabytes or so. So it doesn't really use that much memory at all. And I also toggle this thing off right here, which is reduce machine load. I just want to see how it would perform at the maximum load because I want to really get a feel for the performance. And I've done a test for both auto and this. One caution though, if you have an Intel Mac, I would definitely come into these preferences and choose the GPU for rendering for the AI processor because that's definitely going to improve the time and the performance on the machine. And the one thing I want to touch on is optimization. We can see from all these charts that the CPU, the GPU, it's not really being utilized fully. And also the memory, it's really not utilized that much at all on the system. Obviously, this is not running native on the system yet. And I hope that when they do make this run native on the M1 Pro M1 Max, that they will tap into the encoder decoder engine so that we get even better performance out of the software. But for now, let's have a look at the result. And this is a chart that shows you these three machines, 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte, the M1 Pro and M1 Max 16 inch computer. And this is testing with the M1 SoC being selected for the AI processor and without. We can see that when we go in and target this, we're getting about close to a 30% improvement in performance, which is significant enough that I think if you have the software, if you're enhancing a video, definitely go in and target the SOCI that you want to use for the AI processor. You're going to see a time improvement. Beyond that, 
I mean, they're pretty much clustering just about the same, a few seconds apart, less than a minute or so between all these memory, all these SOC. So having a max in this situation doesn't make any difference whatsoever compared to the Pro. And having more memory, you may get less time in processing, but it's not really going to make too huge of a difference. Here's another chart that I'm going to share with you, and this pretty much tests including the 14 inch base MacBook Pro. And you can see that that machine performs the best out of group. For some weird reason, I ran multiple tests and it still has the lowest number of time for processing, which I find rather fascinating. And now let's have a look at the result when I throw in all the machine into the mix. I've separated this into two graphs. The very top one, it says targeted. I've gone into the preferences for the program and choose the M1 SOCI or the GPU in the system, and we definitely still see the performance improvement between the one with and without. So with is on the top, without is on the bottom. Particularly, I want to point out that the most expensive machine that I've tested on this chart is my Mac Pro 2019, and we're seeing about a 30% improvement, which is really good. However, the performance itself for the price of the machine definitely does not beat out the M1 Pro, M1 Max by any means at all. There is almost no improvement in the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro. And if we take a look at the result from the M1 computer, the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air M1 between these two, we can see that the performance improvement is generally between 20 to 25 percent. We're really not seeing that much more performance improvement out of this machine and it's not really quite the 30 percent that we're getting with the M1 Pro and M1 Max. But here's the thing, if you take a look at the time really closely with these enhancement and everything between the M1 Pro and for instance, like the Mac mini with 16 gigabytes, we can see that the time difference is really about a minute and a half. So if you really want the best price per performance machine to run video enhanced AI, the version that's not native on the system yet, I would say the Mac mini is a really great deal because you save so much money comparing that machine to any of these laptops. And if you don't need the portability, you just need a video enhanced AI rendering machine. That is a really great compelling machine to really use just for these tasks. So what can we gather out of this whole thing? Well, I think that when Topaz have gone in and released a native M1 or a native Apple SOC version of video enhanced AI, we're probably going to see a performance improvement as far as if we're going to see anywhere between 20 to 40%, very similar to Denoise AI, it's really hard to say. But one thing that I want Topaz to really go in and use is the encoder and decoder engine on the M1 Pro and M1 Max. If they can figure out the pipeline or program to really do all the processing ahead of time on the CPU, GPU, whatever that may be, and have the encoder engine that's built into these machines do the putting the files together, I mean, that's going to be really killer because these machines are amazing performers when it comes to video. It's just that the program that we have right now doesn't really go in and utilize all those resources that are available to it. As far as associate and RAM selection go, I mean, if you just want to go with the base machine, I still think that a base 14 inch one with 32 gigabytes of memory, if this is all that you do, it's really not a bad choice at all. Or just choose the Mac mini with 16 gigabytes of memory, eight core, eight GPU. I mean, that tends to work really well too. So that's my thought about video enhanced AI. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give us a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.